So imagine this. Thanos snaps his fingers, and Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, Bruce Banner, War Machine, Rocket Raccoon, and Okoye all get dusted in Wakanda. And after that, 50% of all life in the universe vanishes into dust, including Tony Stark, Nebula, Captain Marvel, and Hawkeye. And now we can have fun and talk about how Avengers Endgame would have played out if the other 50% got dusted instead. A few ground rules before we start. First thing, Thanos didn't get dusted. He had all six stones, so they protected him from getting decimated. The second rule is Ant-Man. During the snap, Scott Lang was inside the Quantum Realm, which is a separate dimension in the multiverse. Thanos wiped out only half of all life in the universe, so in theory, Scott Lang was exempted from the snap since the Quantum Realm is its own dimension. But to keep it fair, and interesting, in this version, Ant-Man will also be one of the dusted. The last rule is that I'm gonna stay as close as possible to the original structure of Endgame and try to see how things would have played out with the other 50%. Okay, so let's look at all of our characters in this What If movie. We've got Black Panther, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Bucky, Scarlet Witch, Falcon, The Wasp, Star-Lord, Drax, Mantis, Groot, and Shuri. These characters will be the main players of this version of the movie. There are many others like Nick Fury and Hank Pym, but I can't include everyone, otherwise things will get very confusing and overcrowded. And so let's start with the what-if possibilities. So after the snap, everyone is in shock of what just happened. The heroes who fought on Titan joined the others, with Doctor Strange simply opening a magical portal that they can just walk through. I guess someone can use their magical powers to just drag the Benatar through the portal as well. Okay, we gotta talk about Strange and his look into the future. It's way too complicated and confusing to understand how his vision will change based on this what-if version. So I'm gonna simplify it by saying that uh, Strange will keep his cards close and won't reveal to anyone what exactly he saw, out of fear that he might cause a change in the timeline and ruin the possible perfect future he's seen. So, while Strange can offer some hints, there's a limit to what he can say. If I tell you what happens, it won't happen. That means he needs to allow some bad things to happen since it's the price that must be paid to save the universe. This way there can still be some suspense in the story. With Strange having spoilers for the future, it can get pretty boring, so you gotta keep things interesting. Like in the original movie, the heroes will travel to the garden to confront Thanos. Clearly, without Nebula, it'll be harder to find the planet, but from what we saw in Endgame, when all six stones are used, they send powerful cosmic energy through the universe, which can be located. Between all the geniuses that weren't dusted and the magical powers of Strange, they could figure out Thanos' location. On Thanos' retirement planet, the heroes will learn that the Mad Titan had destroyed the stones. I'm pretty sure that after what Thanos did to Vision, Wanda will simply tear the Mad Titan apart and she won't be gentle about it at all. Although, imagine if Thanos didn't die and they would have taken him prisoner. Could have been pretty interesting. After this, I don't think that we'll have a five-year time jump, and since Ant-Man got dusted, the heroes won't discover time travel with his help. But the heroes could still figure out time travel with some help from Doctor Strange. While the perfect timeline that he saw is obsolete, he knows that the Quantum Realm could be used to time travel, and brilliant minds like Shuri, Hank Pym, and Janet Van Dyne could figure it out. So, like in the original movie, the heroes will go back to the past for the time heist to collect the Infinity Stones. In this version, the heroes will need to travel to only two timelines instead of three, at least at first. We will have two teams, one who will travel to 2012 and the other to 2014. Let's start with a 2012 mission, where we'll see Doctor Strange, Black Panther, Bucky, and the Wasp go back to the Battle of New York. Doctor Strange will collect the Time Stone from the Ancient One without any issues. Maybe the Ancient One could offer some useful advice and guidance for Strange. The rest of the team will go on a stealth mission to steal both the Space and Mind Stones. T'Challa will team up with Hope Van Dyne to take the Space Stone. Meanwhile, Bucky will go after the Mind Stone. It'd be nice to see Bucky use his Winter Soldier skills to steal the Scepter. And we'll also get an epic fight between Bucky and 2012 Captain America, which I'm pretty sure will be very confusing for Steve. Also, maybe Bucky could use the shield for a bit, which will be nice, considering the fact that he won't be getting that shield later on. But as we all know, Loki ends up stealing the Space Stone, which will force the 2012 team to travel to another timeline. There's the 2013 timeline, where the heroes could try and steal the Space Stone from Odin's vault. Yeah, Thor was way too drunk to remember that the Tesseract was on Asgard. But it was common knowledge that Thor took the stone, so I'm sure the heroes could figure out that it was on Asgard. Just imagine Black Panther and Doctor Strange traveling to the 2013 timeline to steal the Space Stone from Odin's vault. How awesome would it have been if the two of them ended up clashing with Thor? Uru versus Vibranium and magic? Yes, please! 
Also, considering Fury didn't get dusted in this version, he could have just told the heroes that S.H.I.E.L.D. had the Space Stone for decades. Meaning, we could see the heroes go on a stealth mission in the past to steal the Space Stone from S.H.I.E.L.D. So, that's three stones down, three to go. Which brings us to the 2014 team, and it will include Spider-Man, Star-Lord, Wanda Maximoff, The Falcon, Shuri, Drax, Mantis, and Groot. Spider-Man and Star-Lord will travel to Morag for the Power Stone. It'll be fun to see the banter between the two Peters, but let's not forget that Quill will still mourn Gamora at this point. Without the five-year time jump, her death will still be very recent and painful. So, Star-Lord will prove that he is an emotional idiot by putting the whole mission at risk. Quill will realize that Gamora is still alive in 2014. While it's a totally different Gamora, that won't matter to Quill. He lost the woman he loves, so he's gonna save her, even if she doesn't know who he is at this point. Star-Lord's plan will be to find Gamora and take her with him to the present. So he's an idiot. Yeah. And so, after the two Peters collect the Power Stone, Spider-Man will go back to the present, but Star-Lord will stay behind. Quill could steal the Milano from his younger self to achieve his mission, but his attempt will, of course, go terribly wrong. One thing will lead to another, and Star-Lord will be captured and delivered to Thanos. We'll get back to what happened to Star-Lord later. In the original film, Thor and Rocket travel to the 2013 timeline to collect the Reality Stone, but I don't think it'll be needed in this version. Instead, Wanda, Sam, and Shuri will travel to nowhere. Why would he go to nowhere? Because for years, the Reality Stone's been safely stored there with a man called the Collector. The Guardians knew that the Collector had the Reality Stone. They themselves tried to steal it from him in Infinity War. As for how he'll get there, they could use the Benatar, or maybe Shuri will build some Wakandan spacecraft. It'll be nice to see these characters go to space, especially Shuri, who could get some inspiration from what you'll see on the mission. And then there's the Soul Stone. Back in Infinity War, just before Star-Lord started wailing on Thanos, Nebula mentioned that the stone was on Vormir, so that's how the heroes will know about the location of the Soul Stone. He took her to Vormir. He came back with the Soul Stone. The team that will travel there will be Drax, Mantis, and Groot. And we all know what's gonna happen on Vormir. Someone will need to be sacrificed, and I think it'll be most fitting if it'll be Drax who takes the dive off the Vormir cliff. Out of all of the other heroes in this version, I think that Drax is the only one whose death will have meaning. Most of these heroes don't even know each other, and many of them still have so much story to tell. Drax needs a powerful death. Let's be honest, Drax didn't really do much since the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. He kind of became this joke of a character. So at least it'll be nice if his death will have some powerful meaning. The Guardians are a family, and Drax's death will be devastating, but also very meaningful. Drax's sacrifice will have a real impact on the story, and will also give him something interesting to do. And in the end, see my wife and daughter again. And so, that is six stones collected. But let's not forget about Thanos, who will need to travel from the 2014 timeline to the present. Well, I guess it's a good thing that Star-Lord got captured in 2014. Thanos will torture Quill and learn about his own future. Like in the original movie, Thanos and his army will use the Pym Particles tech to travel to the future, only this time with Star-Lord. But before Thanos attacks, we need someone to snap their fingers and bring back all the dusted back to life. Without Hulk, Thor, or Captain Marvel, we don't have many heroes who could survive the devastating energy of the stones. Doctor Strange is a possible candidate, but he isn't as durable as Thanos and Hulk, and both almost died after using all six stones. I think it'll make the most sense if Wanda will be the one that snaps her fingers. Her powers come from the Mind Stone, so there's some cosmic connection there. While Wanda is far from being invulnerable, she is extremely powerful. Wanda was able to destroy the Mind Stone, so maybe she can also use her powers to endure the energy of the stones. Also, the Gauntlet will be made from Vibranium, and maybe Shuri can add extra layers of protection from the extreme cosmic radiation of the stones. Plus, maybe Strange can add his magic for extra protection. Or who knows, maybe they'll use Pym Particles to make the Gauntlet really tiny. Would that minimize its radiation? Regardless, Wanda will be the one that brings back all of the dusted. She will survive the snap, but the energy of the stones will have everlasting effects on her. After this, Thanos will attack, and the final battle will begin. The heroes will clash with Thanos as we will get ready for the dusted to show up. During the battle, Star-Lord will be able to convince Gamora to turn on Thanos and help save the day. And it will all lead to the portal scene. Yes! And this was how things could have played out if the other 50% were dusted. 